Melbourne is a massive urban spreading city and it's going to be four degrees hotter in 70 years. With that growing heat, tree canopy, uh, providing shade, providing cooler environments, providing clean water, all of these become incredibly critical for human health. The Botanic Gardens becomes this incredible, important green space, and it's the lungs of Melbourne. My name is Andrew Laidlaw, I'm the landscape architect at the Royal Botanic Gardens Victoria, and I've worked here for 26 years. We've really changed our focus in the last 20 years, where we're really trying to transition a lot of this vegetation so that it's going to stand up to warmer climates. One of our most powerful tools to combat temperature and rainfall is our plant selection. The drylands is an exciting new initiative where we're actually transitioning our plant material, our trees, our shrubs, our ground covers, to using plants that come from warmer climates. By selecting these plants that are gonna cope with our climate, then we're maintaining that rich biodiverse environment. And so we can reach out to the municipalities, we can reach out to the schools, and we can reach out to individuals and home gardeners and bring this message about transitioning your landscape using plants from warmer climates. This idea of landscape succession, we're using it in an Australian context here, but we're actually finding this IP that we've developed here is exciting some of the European gardens, and even Q has invited our great researchers over to talk about landscape succession and how important it is for combating climate. Fern Gully is one of the most exciting places in this botanic gardens. We've created a different microclimate there. And this microclimate is sometimes six degrees cooler on a really hot day than the outside exposed temperatures, greening our city and cooling our city down, helping to change that heat island effect. The other important piece is that you're bringing pockets of biodiversity. So while it's important that these pockets are connected, they still provide places for not just humans, but for insects and beetles and bugs. Having places like the Fern Gully and trying to mimic this into our urban environment in our city and in our suburbs is making our cities more livable. We're creating places where humans are going to feel better about themselves and that we're actually creating places for all the bugs and insects of the world as well. So that's really what our work is here. We're framed by a sustainable approach to landscape management, um, a sensitive ecological approach to everything we do still helps us deliver that in pretty much every way from our point of view and has really benefited the product and the quality of our work. My name's Charlie Carroll. I'm the head arborist at Royal Botanic Gardens, Victoria. If we're engaged in a tree preservation or a fine pruning or something at a heavy reduction level, uh, we want to give the staff the correct tool that references that sort of job. We use the most efficient tool for that purpose, the quietest, most sustainable tool for that purpose, and in most cases, it's in our range of professional battery tools. Battery-powered tools have really revolutionised the way that we operate as an ARB team here at the Royal Botanic Gardens. It's a more sensitive approach to landscape management. It's clear and it's a really hands-on version of how we can show that to our visitors and create a better experience. The Botanic Gardens is a massive biodiversity hotspot for Melbourne. But we should also be trying to link other hotspots through pollinating corridors. Melbourne Pollinator Corridor is an eight kilometre strip from Westgate Park right through to the Botanic Gardens. This is an initiative by Emma Cutting, creating little environments that have got ground covers, grasses and shrubs and trees and logs and rocks that are actually creating places for insects to live and thrive. It's connecting green space, so it's incredibly important and we love it that people are using us but connecting to us so that all these animals and insects can start to move between spaces. What we deliver here is something that really enriches and really improves the lives of people living in Melbourne. It's been a real privilege to be able to work here for 26 years and be part of a team that's really delivering a much more sustainable approach to landscape, it's bringing new ideas to landscape and really creating a landscape that's going to take Melburnians into the future in a really healthy way.